Hi, my name is Ashra Patel. I'm a student at Holland Hall, which is a school in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And today, I would like to share with you my insights about political dysfunction in America from a bipartisan perspective. Now, if I'm to talk about problems in partisan America, I must first explain why partisan hostility exists. You see, our natural need to defend ourselves and our parties is actually not our fault. It's our brain's way of protecting ourselves. In 2016, to test the human's ability to change one's mind about politics, USC tested 40 liberals by giving them political prompts and counterarguments to read while undergoing an MRI of the brain. Well, an unexpected thing was found out by the researchers. A part of the prefrontal cortex associated with emotions increased in activity, and a part of the frontal cortex associated with changing your mind, or what Jonas Kaplan, the lead author of the study, called cognitive flexibility, decreased in activity. Essentially, the researchers found that as humans, we naturally get more emotional and resist changing our minds when presented with opposing political views. Now, this problem has only been worsened by the popularization of social media in American society. These platforms, they work via algorithms to promote the most likes, views, comments, shares, interactions, etc. And well, think back to your childhood days. No one made a big fuss over someone complimenting someone or helping someone up. No, it was the fights, the loud arguments, the rude remarks. That's what we were all drawn to. And the same is true online. Except online facilitates attacks such as alienating the other side, hate speech, and the same woody, rude remarks. And the result is not pretty. As a nation, we find ourselves in these digital echo chambers which reinforce our views, emit opposing opinions, and in turn, make us more radical. And these echo chambers, they extend into our social lives where many people feel a political party is close to their identities and struggles to sit across from someone on the other side. This polarizing climate creates an us versus them mindset in America, making politics a competition instead of a system of collaborative change. As Americans, we have no value in being American, but instead, whom we vote for. Now, before we endlessly panic with no real cause or solution, allow me to provide an example of dysfunction in American society and why we must break free from the traditional hardline party thinking to tackle it. Let's start big and look at our more traditional media. Although media and news can be a large dynamic topic, if we frame our thinking through some principles of creating news, we can uncover many things. Our three principles of creating news are news is created by individuals, news companies need consistent audiences, and it is beneficial for news companies to provide analysis and opinions instead of facts and data. Well, let's break that down. Well, although news companies are no longer funded by political parties, it is known by the average American that certain companies have certain audiences, and well, the data backs up this suspicion. In 2019, the Pew Research Center found that of the Americans who primarily watch Fox News, 93% are Republican or leaning Republican. And for MSNBC, 95% Democrat or leaning Democrat. These drastically differences in audiences arise from our first two principles of news. Well, first, my critique is not that news is some evil thing trying to tear the country apart. It's just that because news is created by individuals who carry their own ideological lenses, it makes sense that certain authors will portray certain biases and viewpoints better than others. And because news companies need consistent audiences of people who feel good when they read and watch their news, authors under one ideology often combine under an organization. And the fact that a company holds a certain type of biases, bias is widely known. I mean, a simple Google search can tell you how any company historically leans. Furthermore, news provides an important check on people in power and politicians by uncovering hidden information. The only problem happens when an individual gets stuck in one of those informational bubble alternate realities where their views go unchallenged, their news goes unchecked for misinformation, which compounds their political radicalization. And we can find ourselves stuck in these informational bubble alternate realities because of our third principle of news, the fact that news companies now provide more analysis and opinions. Researchers at the Research and Development, or RAND Corporation, used AI technology to scan written and televised media from 1989 through 2017 for instances of emotional appeal or subjectivity. Their results characterize modern media as media that has moved from more context and objective-based reporting to reporting that is more subjective, relies more heavily on argumentation and advocacy, and includes more emotional appeals. This leveraging of human emotions makes sense for these companies, but still it is damaging to the American individual and their ability to think critically about what they intellectually consume. 
Now, we can't blame these companies for sensationalizing news because in my generation, full of fast-paced TikTok content and quick notifications, it can be hard for an individual to sit through an informational wall of text if they do not feel an emotional attachment to it. And this need for emotional belonging is why someone like Tucker Carlson is so successful. His ability to rile up the audience with his fast, passionate, articulate speech, not some highly profound level of experience, is what makes his show a must watch for many Americans. This theatrical, reactionary style of news seen across many companies is only made worse by the fact that news hosts can focus all of their attention towards one ideology, making the other side the butt of the joke. And well, that's the key issue. Because we live in a society full of endless entertainment, news has been forced onto the same path. But the downsides of a news company being so intimately connected with an individual can be tremendous. From the previously mentioned polarized society to the general public's ignorance about a flaw that may be plugging one or both parties. Democracy is contingent on a well-informed population. And when that is ended, dysfunctional systems are permitted. One such example is the general public's allowance of gerrymandering, which has received very little media attention except for as a means to predict election outcomes. Now, I imagine many of you are at some level familiar with gerrymandering, but here's a brief overview. Our representatives, they're elected in districts by people across the country, a system which in theory gives the people a voice, holds leaders accountable, and has the efficiency of having representatives. Every 10 years, we conduct a federal census, the demographic data of which states then use to draw district lines to form uh, for many positions, including the House of Representatives. Now, you would think that these district lines would look smooth with maybe smaller sections in bigger cities because of their higher populations. Instead, they look something like this. That's the current map of Oklahoma districts. And although they may seem random, they have been strategically designed. You see, in 37, 37 of our 50 states, state legislators are in charge of drawing district lines. And naturally, they form districts to benefit their parties in the future. To see what I mean, let's look back at Oklahoma, for example, which had Republicans in power the last time districts were redrawn. If we look at Oklahoma City and Tulsa, the two largest cities in Oklahoma, you can see that Oklahoma City has been split across many districts, and Tulsa has been grouped into one district with more rural areas like Wagner attached to it. Now, both of these strategies, they work to dilute the higher democratic-leaning populations found in these larger cities, making it harder for the people in the cities to have their voices heard. Essentially, a voter is given more or less of an impact depending on their agreement with the legislative party. I mean, in the most simple terms, instead of a voter picking their representatives, representatives are able to pick their voters. And while historically this partisan gerrymandering started in the Republican Party, Democrats quickly followed suit. It is a structural flaw. Take a look at the map of Illinois, for example. Those overreaching oblong branch branches shows you that gerrymandering has taken place. Additionally, after our most recent election cycle, Vox commented that, and I quote, in Texas, the GOP made a strategic decision to focus on safety for its incumbents so, instead of expanding their reach. So they swiped out most swing, di swing districts, making Republican incumbents harder for Democrats to defeat. The language that these politicians use behind redistricting shows us that they treat it like a board game where we, the people, are mere pawns to be misrepresented at these representatives' will. And while for some this issue has become a partisan one with either side either winning or losing the redistricting game, if we take a step back and look at this system objectively, no matter who is winning the manipulation, it is simply corrupt. We live in a nation where a change in leadership and therefore ideology is not possible even if most of the people in an area want it. And this political game can be seen across many areas of politics, from the order of names on a ballot, to voting limitations like absentee voting bans and voting only on work days, to the fact that many laws help big lobbying corporations over the average American citizen. Now, it's important to note that all of these issues, they do not arise from the poor morals or corruptions of an individual politician or politicians. No, they arise because of our dysfunctional American system, which enables this abuse of power and lack of social pressure against it. So, it's over. Our voices go unheard, the news divides us, and the system cannot be changed. Wrong. We live in a nation that has achieved unimaginable progress for the freedom of enslaved people to women's suffrage to marriage equality. 
Now, it's important to note that in all of these time periods, the American population as a whole did not fight for this change. No, it took a group of individuals to bring this country forward. And now is the time for our next big hurdle. And it is in our hands as the individuals to change it. The common theme of progress in this country is a story of individuals coming together to contest the dominant group or system. I challenge you to see that correcting our dysfunctional American system supersedes all party lines. Our democracy is meaningless in a world of gerrymandering, voter suppression, isolated viewpoints, and countless other hidden issues. If we break free from the traditional hardline party thinking, we can unite for, the, for a future where the people's voice creates meaningful legislation. The real battle is not against the other side, it's against the very system that is limiting our growth. Now, besides just calling your local politicians and legislators and hoping they listen, get involved with nonprofit organizations like Represent Us, which can connect you with like-minded individuals, introduce you to legal solutions like independent redistricting committees, provide you opportunities to protest and sign petitions and to make a real change. When we all come together, the politicians are forced to hear our hopes for reform. Now, if you don't have the time to protest, advocacy can take form in many ways. Simply sharing this discussion with a neighbor creates a ripple effect far beyond your imagination. And I know, I, I know it can be hard to feel empowered in a place like Oklahoma, miles and miles away from our nation's capital, but you must understand that in the instances of women's suffrage and marriage equality, they did not happen federally overnight. No, they happened because over time, individual states passed laws until eventually the federal government followed suit. You have the ability to create change and empower others anywhere. One thing is true, inaction will never lead to progress. So what are you waiting for? Thank you.